I would start with my parents. I would start my journey with them because they have always been not only encouraging and supportive, but essential to my love of learning. They both would take me to museums every weekend. We lived in LA, so we had the Natural History Museum, the Science Museum, the Art Museums. Every weekend we would go somewhere new. It really made me who I am today. Science to me was just this out of reach, unknowable thing. When I thought of science, I had this kind of figure in my head that was this like middle-aged white man in a lab coat and like crazy math equations on the board. And that was just not something that I was interested in and not something that I felt I could do either. So if you had talked to me four years ago and said I was gonna be in grad school for science, I would have said you are crazy. Once I started college, I joined the like hiking and outdoors club. And so I loved that. I loved being outdoors. And the more I was outdoors, the more I wanted to know why there was a mountain range here and why right behind the mountain range there was a desert. And so these questions that I was asking are the kinds of questions that a geologist or a geographer asks. I just had never known that those were careers. So once I figured out that you could get paid to go hiking and look at rocks, I switched majors pretty quickly. Right now what I'm currently working on is I'm looking at mammal teeth. We can do isotopic analysis to look at the kind of carbon that's in their teeth. The type of carbon tells us the type of plants they were eating. And so we're trying to see at what times they expanded, how fast they expanded, and where they expanded. When I'm looking at my teeth and I'm looking at what I'm working with, I'm kind of already thinking, how can I explain this to other people and how can I get them as excited as I am? I want to do my PhD in education. I'm realizing that that's really what pulls me. I like talking to people. I just want everyone to understand what science is and appreciate it. So being interested in science communication, I started the podcast. You know, that's part of my way of getting into that world. And I had already tried looking for a podcast that was talking about historical women in STEM or just about women in STEM in general. And I hadn't really found a podcast that I wanted to listen to. So I made one instead. When you ask someone to name five women scientists, they can't do it. This invisibility of women or even minorities, you know, people of color and STEM, creates this false narrative that they didn't exist. To not see someone like yourself in a field kind of just doesn't even let you know that's a possibility. That's one of the things that I would tell a lot of the students that I visited in high schools was they will pay you to do the things that you're interested in, right? Their minds would be blown by the fact that I got to live in Panama and they paid me to do that, you know? If you find something that you're interested in, especially in science, especially for me as a woman and a woman of color in science, there are these opportunities that can be open to you. So I want to make myself visible as a woman and a woman of color in paleontology, just to put that idea out there, just to let people know when you think of, you know, a Latina, it's not just a maid, she's a scientist too.